Hello. I know it has been 2020 since we last spoke, so I should introduce myself again. My name is Mac Green, and I'm a huge fan of Nintendo and Sega, more particularly a big fan of most of their popular franchises, Mario and Sonic. I also love bands like Skillet, Linkin Park, Three Days Grace, Breaking Benjamin, Evidence, Thousand Foot Crutch, Fallout Boy, My Chemical Romance, Paramore, and Green Day, just to name a few. I once played a very weird game called Mario and Sonic Adventures Through the Dead House. The game follows Mario, Luigi, Peach, Yoshi, Sonic, Tails, Amy, and Knuckles trying to get to a theme park called Speed Park, until they get lost and they find a gothic looking mansion. They find a hedgehog in there named Oliver the Hedgehog. Oliver makes them think that they would stay in the night, but his zombies kill them and turn them into zombies. It then cuts to a month later, when their friends set out to search for them. From Mario's side, there was Toad, Toadette, Daisy, Rosalina, Luma, Toadsworth, Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, Cranky Kong, and Funky Kong. As for Sonic's side, there was Silver, Blaze, Charmy, Espio, Vector, Cream, Cheese, Shadow, Omega, Rouge, and Big. They all set out to take a bus to find their friends until it breaks down, and the driver has to go out and fix it until he gets killed by zombies. Once they finally reach the mansion, and had plans to split up and find their friends, until being found by Oliver. They also found out that Mario, Luigi, Peach, Yoshi, Sonic, Tails, Amy, and Knuckles are now zombies. It looked like all hope was lost until three original characters show up. The three original characters were two hedgehogs named Winston and Mistletoe, and a medical robot hedgehog named Heavy. Then they find the room that has the cure, but Oliver wouldn't tell them how to use the cure, leading to Mistletoe to throw it on the floor creating a puff of purple smoke. Lean to the zombified heroes being cured, they also catch Oliver and took him to prison in London, England. And then all the heroes walk home, getting ready to order a pizza. While the credits roll with the song Hero by Skillet playing, it was a pretty good game. A few months later, I would revisit the game for a replay, but found a new story mode called Return to the Dead House. It picks up right after the events, adventures of the Dead House, presumably a few days later. They were chilling out until Tails had shown them a breaking news flash showing them a new zombie outbreak had started, so they had to take shelter, not knowing what would happen next. They also had noticed that Toad, Toadette, Silver, and Blaze were missing. It was then it was revealed that they were killed by zombies, and Oliver broke in in time with a female hedgehog named Samantha the Hedgehog. Mario and Sonic would jump at Oliver and Samantha for killing their friends, but Oliver and Samantha dodged them, attacked them, and had their guns pointed at Mario and Sonic's heads. Then Donkey Kong and Victor would sneak up behind Oliver and Samantha, attack them, and they would start celebrating with Diddy Kong and Charmy joining in as well. But Oliver and Samantha would both get up and shoot Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong, Victor and Charmy. When they are killed, I hate everything about you three days as Grace played. They decided to let Mario and Sonic live, but Shadow had the idea to call Winston and Mistletoe to get them and Heavy to join them in the fight against Oliver. There were some zombies bursting in, and they killed as many zombies as they could before Omega had the idea to self-destruct. Everyone got out of the building before Omega self-destructed, and then they went out to meet up with Winston and Mistletoe and Heavy. But the reunion was being interrupted by a herd of zombies. Then they would kill Big, Rouge, Espio, Daisy, Toadsworth, Cranky Kong and Funky Kong. Winston and Mistletoe would hold off the zombies as best they could before reuniting with Mario, Sonic, and the others. They soon had the same broken down bus when they had first to set out Mario, Sonic, and their friends. Then they'd always find a way to get them back up and running. They would also turn into a trailer to a camp-in. They would sleep on the bus at night and then wake up the next day to start traveling. But Rosalina and Cream could not sleep that night so they went out for a walk. They were surrounded by zombies until the new original character, Hiroto, would save them. He had two swords and two guns, and he was saving Rosalina and Cream from the zombies. The legacy Black Veal Brides plays as Rosalina and Cream would meet up with their friends and introduce Hiroto to them. Before being ambushed by zombies again, both Rosalina and Cream would see the zombies approaching Luma and Cheese. They would sacrifice themselves to save them. While Rosalina and Cream sacrifice themselves to save Luna, Luma, and Cheese, the song Ashes by Eden plays 
by breaking Benjamin played. After the tragedy, Mario would have to announce that no one should leave the bus unless it's an emergency. Sonic would also cheer up Amy after Cream died and looked after Cheese. The bus would then break down again and Shadow would have to go fix the bus. While that was happening, they could hear screams. The zombies had gotten to Shadow and when they could go for Dixie Kong, then she died. Then Hirato would go off on a zombie killing spree, while if you can't hang by the sleeping sirens played. He killed them all and then a cutscene with Oliver and Samantha was shown. It then cuts back to the heroes and as they would get up the bus to start running again, travel a bit more and slept for the night. It was then the morning again when they started traveling, only for Heavy to announce that he had a malfunction and died. They would later stop at the bus to stretch their legs, but the zombies were approaching. They would get back on the bus, but the zombies would have had their hands and arms breaking through the windows. Winston and Mistletoe would then shoot the zombies through the broken windows, and Knuckles would d drive the bus as fast as he could, running over the zombies. The emergency exit doors weren't closed properly, and Yoshi had fell off, only to be saved by Amy. Hirato placed a turret on the bus and started to shoot the zombies with it. The emergency exit door wasn't closed properly again, and Luma and Cheese fell out. Then the zombies would kill them, and they struggled until they were teleported to a base. It turns out the base was a hideout of Hirato's resistance. They would be greeted by Saruka the Hedgehog, and they would come up with a plan. Their plan was to invade Oliver's house and stop the zombie invasion. Knuckles and Yoshi would be on the lookout and give Mario, Sonic, Luigi, Tails, Peach, and Amy the signal when they went inside the mission or mansion. Winston, Mistletoe, Hiroto, and Saruka would kill as many zombies as they could. They continued to discuss the plan until a giant zombie busted into the base. They fight the giant zombie while the song Take It Out On Me by a thousand foot crutch played. The giant zombie would grab Yoshi and Knuckles, throw them onto the ground, then step on them, killing them both. Hirato would then kill the giant zombie, and they would teleport to Oliver's mansion to do a recap of the plan, and then more new original characters would appear. They were called the Punk Rock Hedgehogs. Their names were Derek, Tom, Billy Joe, Patrick Haley, and A. Avril. Of course, they were named after band members from the punk bands like Sum 41, Blink 182, Green Day, Fall Out Boy, Paramo, and Alvaro Levine. They also screamed their names while the song Waiting Dane by some 41 plays. They proceeded to pull off the plan as Winston and Mistletoe and Hiroto and Saruka and all the other members of Hiroto's res re residence kill as many zombies as they could. The punk rock hedgehogs then gave Mario, Sonic, Luigi, Tails, Peach, and Amy the signal to go in. When they go into the mansion, it was revealed that Samantha had the three brothers and a sister. Their names were Harry, George, Noah, and Olivia. Then the heroes would pick who they wanted to fight. Mario had Oliver, Luigi had Harry, Peach had Samantha, and Sonic had George, Tails had Noah, and Amy had Olivia. L Luigi was then fighting Harry, but Harry didn't kill Luigi, but he did stab him, and Luigi kills him by kicking him out the window, falling to his death. Amy and Olivia were fighting, and Amy had her Pico Pico hammer and knocked her out unconscious. Then it cuts back to the outside of the mansion, where the others were fighting the herds of zombies. The punk rod hedgehogs would then join in, only to fight to have Mistletoe send them on a quest to raise an army. Mistletoe then gets killed by zombies when Winston asks Hiroto if he could watch over his son when he, if he dies before he goes on a mission run killing as many zombies as he could. Winston dies before cutting back to the mansion. Tails finds a spike on the roof, grabs Noah, and then drops him to the spikes, getting impaled and killed. Sonic fights George until Amy knocks him out unconscious, drags him and sets him beside Olivia. Then it cuts to Peach and Samantha fighting. Peach hides as she has a great idea. She finds a roll of duct tape and a knife and tapes it to her parasol, and then she kills Samantha before cutting to the punk rock hedgehogs, who raised an army. The members of the lab Winston and Mistletoe work for, and more of Hiroto's residents, and more punk hedgehogs. They all charge while the song Help is on the way by Rise 8 against Plaid. Then, it cuts to Mario and Oliver fighting again, and Oliver threatens Mario by activating a bomb if he took one more step. Sonic, Luigi, Tails, Peach, and Amy rushed in, 
telling Oliver that his wife and two of her siblings were dead, and he was outnumbered. Then George and Olivia walk in with their guns in hand before Peaches uses a knife on her parasol to kill Olivia. Then Luigi then grabs the gun that fell off of Olivia's hand to shoot and kill George. Olivia and Oliver, and then it now cuts to back to the outside of the mansion, with the heroes escaping the house before it explodes. All the zombies are dead. Hiroto went to Winston's mother's house to pick up Raymond. Later they would have a party, but before it started, Mario had a speech, and then cuts to the outside of the house, then zooms in with the sky with all the dead heroes who died and appear as angels while the song is a gospel by panic. But at the end of the disco played before the end credits. At first when I played the original story, I didn't like the story because it was too dark and played it thinking it would be more like Luigi's Mansion. But then a month later I would play it again and start to like it. I would even tell my two friends, Charlotte and Ike, about it. Heck, they would even come over a couple of times to play the game with me. But that was from June to December of 2020. Now we're in 2022 and I am getting ready to spend the weekend with my Uncle Jim. Just like me, Jim is a big fan of Nintendo and Sega games, but he is also more into anything horror than I am. He has to like slashers like Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, and Michael Myers, just to name a few. He loves shows like The Walking Dead, Supernatural, just to name a couple. As well as video games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill. So I thought if I had brought Mario and Sonic Adventures Through the Dead House, seeing it was a parody of Resident Evil, Maybe him and I could have played together. Hey, Mac, I heard my Uncle Jim say as he came into my house. You ready to go, he asked. Yeah, just let me go tell my parents. Bye, I told him. I would tell my parents bye and then get in Jim's car. So, Mac, I have been thinking before we go to my place, we could get some dinner at the seafood place. What do you think of that, he asked. That'd be great, I replied. Me and Jim arrived at the seafood restaurant we ordered our food and then we talked a bit about the recent video games we've been talking about. Well, recently I've been playing Kirby in the Forgotten Land, I told him. I'm also really excited for games like Mario Strikers, Battle League, Splatoon 3, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Mario Rabbids of Sparks of Hope, and the Breath by the Wild sequel, Sonic Origins. Here I recently started to get into some Capcom games. I'm really excited for a Capcom Fighting Collection, I continued. I'm also excited for those games too, Jim said. I'm also excited for Bayonetta Free, Jim continued. Speaking of video games, I was never told you about this, but two years ago, I played this game I think you might like, I told him. What's the game, Jim asked. It's a game called Mario and Sonic Adventures Through the Dead House, I replied. Okay, I don't know why that name sounds familiar. Very similar, though, Jim said. Does that name sound familiar, I asked. Yes, he replied. Before he could talk again, the waiter brought in the food we ordered to our table. Why does that name sound familiar? I asked. Because a character in a game I played that I never told you especially mentioned a game with the same title, Jim replied. What game did you hear from it? I asked. It was a game called Mario and Sonic on Quiet Hill. It's the game that parodies Silent Hill, he replied. Wow, the game I played parodied Resident Evil. I said, now that's cool. The game you played parodied a horror game, and a game I also played parodied a horror game, Jim said. What was that game about, I asked. The game started with Mario characters like Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, Yoshi, Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, Toad, Toadette, Rosalina, Luma, Pauline, and Egad, and even Sonic, other Sonic characters like Sonic, Tails, Amy, Cream, Cheese, Knuckles, Shadow, Rouge, Silver, Blaze, Vector, Espio, Charmy, and Omega, Jim said. He continued to explain the game with me as well as the other one I like. Like Sonic and Amy are married and have a kid named Turbo. As well as Mario and Peach have twins named Lorando and Alice. Now, so does Luigi and Daisy name the kid Ricardo and Gilla? And then Shadow and Rouge have a daughter named Shade. Who have the Turbo have a copy of Sonic and Mario Adventures Through the Dead House? He started to explain in the plot. He said that it started off with Amy, Sonic, and Turbo boarding a bus to greet the characters, and they were on a trip for Turbo's birthday before the bus crashes in a town called Quiet Hill, obviously making fun of Silent Hill. Mario, Sonic, and the others wake up to find out that the kids are missing, 
and that the bus driver is dead. Then they start searching for the kids until they stop at an abandoned gas station when they did hear footsteps. They heard the kids on a snowy atmosphere before they walked away and disappeared into the fog. They would then open a gate, finding skeletal remains before running away from them, and it began to get darker. Sonic lights a match to continue searching for the children before finding more skeletal remains and demonized Koopa Troopas. They all ran until they pass out, find themselves in the town's police station. Shade and Echna, the role of Silby Bennett from the first game, had a conversation with the heroes of this story. Mario, Sonic, and Shadow began to explain to Shade that he and the others went on vacation before the bus crash and that they were now searching for their children. Then, Shade would talk to them about bizarre stuff going on on the town before Mario, Sonic, and the others got up. Shade then asks where they were going, and then Sonic said that they had to go look for the kids. Shade would then go let them go and find their kids, but not before giving them a gun and warning them about knowing of who they were shooting. Then he hears something going on in the radio. Mario and Sonic would go check it out before getting attacked and demonized by Paragoombas. Then they pulled out their guns and shoot the demise Paragoombas. Then they went to check out the alleyway again, and then he entered another gas station. But they didn't stay long. They also did kill some Demonis Koopa Troopas on the way, and then they would search the abandoned police car to find a key. They would then try to find the gateway with those skeletal remains from earlier. Mario finds a paper that read out loud, saying going to the school. Shadow and Rouge would then find out about the paper that was from Shade's sketchbook. Tails would find a steel pipe and said that he would keep it, just in case if he had to use it as a weapon. Then they would head towards the school, before finding the locked door to the house. Then they entered the house and they searched for some more, before finding a map on the wall. They would leave the house and find another key, but then enter the same house that they left and unlock the door. When they leave, they find out that it was getting darker again. Then they were in an alleyway before finally entering the school. Cream finds a map on the ground and suggests that they use it. When they go in, they find a lot of random writings that felt like poems. They would then go in to the nurse's office and gather some medical supplies before going outside to another part of the school. Killing some demon Koopa Troopas as they could try to open another door, but the lock was jammed. They tried another door that was also locked before entering a hallway of the school and searched some more. They would go in into another door, but that was also jammed, before going up to the stairs, finding an empty classroom. They would leave the classroom when they found out that it was empty, and then they would enter the bathroom, hearing someone or something crying. But they would find a demon Koopa Troopa and would kill them. Before killing them, some were entering another hallway, and they would go into the music room to find a piece of paper reading another poem. While they were reading the poem, Rouge would find the piano before leaving the music room, heading back to the hallway when they would hear something. We are going on with the lockers. SBO would then look in one, find nothing. Victor would look in another and found a very angry cat jumping out of the locker before hearing footsteps. Then there was screaming as if someone was getting killed. They would leave the locker room and go into the back of the hallway. They would then enter another empty classroom then leave it, noticing the room was empty. They would then enter a library to see if there were any clues, but they couldn't find any in the library, so they would enter the chemistry lab, and in the lab, Toad would find another poem to read, before leaving the chemistry lab to enter another room. They grabbed some more supplies before going back to the chemistry lab to get the golden medallion out of a statue's hand. Then enter the medallion into something in the back of the music room, then they unlock the piano. They would check the piano as a silver medallion fell off the hole. They then they leave the music room to go outside, insert the silver medallion. They go back to a room in the building, search for some more. Then they enter the boiler room and Omega notices that it's broken. So Pauline flips the switch. When they go to the valve, then they notice that the valve is tightly shut. And when they try to move it before going back outside, they would then enter elsewhere that has a ladder and leads down before sending somewhere up when it's rainy outside. When they were back at the school, before finding an abandoned room, they would gather some more supplies and leave. Then they would find a room full of skeletal remains. 
Tails would find a shotgun. They would left that room before going entering another, finding a lot of telephones. One of them started to ring before Sonic picks up one of the phones. When Sonic picks up the phone, he found out it was Turbo. He was trying to tell him where he was before getting cut off before he could finish. After that would happen, they would hear something happening in the locker room, then decide to go check it out. When they find a dead body of a demon Koopa Troopa falling out of the locker. Rouge would then find a key with the dead demon Koopa Troopa before leaving the locker room. They could then look in the ran another random book in the other room. Silver, Blaze, Rosalina, Pauline would read. Sonic tells them that they need to focus, before finding the key hanging from a hole that was just out of reach. They would go back to the valve and try to open it. And then it drains the wrong hole. Cream had the idea to plug that hole up with a rubber ball she had. When they tried the valve again, successfully got the key out of the hole, and then they found an elevator that went down. Once they got out of the elevator, they would find and kill a demon that looked like Bowser, but it wasn't Bowser. After killing the demon that looked like Bowser, it would cut to a cutscene of a little girl that gets up and disappears. When they find themselves in another boiler room, before leaving the school, finding out it was the next day, then they heard church bells. They searched some more before entering another house. They didn't find anything, so they went outside to search for some more in the snow. They would search up until they entered another building and it looked like a garage, seeing that there was a car in the building, as well as an engine beside it. Then they would leave the garage and search some more before entering the church, where the church bells began to ring. They would then find a female hedgehog. Her name would later be revealed to be as Delilah the Hedgehog. She talks to our heroes before giving them something, leaving without introducing herself or and leaving them all confused. They would leave to the church for some more before entering the hospital. But then it cuts to another cutscene with the another original character named Michael the Hedgehog. He had a gun at the heroes, and they would introduce themselves to Michael before explaining that he was on vacation, and he explains his side of the story. When he was taking a nap in the staff room, he then woke up and he was stuck in the hospital. They talked some more and asked him about the six kids going missing and if he had seen them, but he said he didn't know. They would then go to the next room, find a newspaper with the article being clipped out. They would also find a map of the hospital basement. Tails had the key to the basement. They would also find a room with sort of liquid being spilled, and books were scattered around the desk. They would then leave the room and enter the basement. Then they also started walking down the stairs and started to look around the basement. When they looked in the room with all the generators, they would find a sign in the house in the generators to the power of the doors. Vector would then go and turn the generator and the elevator's power would on. They would only go through the first fourth floor before they came to a little girl, or from earlier, walking away. They searched for some more before entering a room filled with demonized versions of the Wiggles, or Wigglers. They would then go out of the room and search for some place more, before taking the elevator back down to level 2, then level 1. They could see some more before entering a locked door. When they would find a gate, it was covered in vines, and then Tails used disinfecting alcohol to burn down the vines. They then find another abandoned hospital room that looked like the one that recently had been there. Then they walked towards a picture of a little girl from earlier. The little girl's name was Mary, and they all would leave the room, search for some more before riding up to the level 3 to search for some more up there. Then they found another room with the bed, TV, and VCR, then they would put the tape into the VCR and start watching the tape. The tape had a female voice talking about different kinds of monsters' DNA before getting attacked or possibly killed by the monster. They would search a little bit more before it cuts to another cutscene as they find Sally Acorn getting up from under a table. She would then get up and hug all the heroes and they would talk for a bit. If it introduced the Mario cast to her, she would then ask what was going on around the hospital and where everybody is and that she was probably knocked out. Sonic would then ask Sally if she had seen the six children around, which Sally says that she wasn't sure as she's been unconscious all that time. Luigi would then ask her about the creatures in the basement. Sally would say no but ask why. Then Knuckles would question her. Sally would then explain that they went under strict orders not to go into the basement or storage room. Sonic would then try to explain before him and the other heroes would hear loud noises that would make their ears hurt. 
Then they would pass out and end up into another room. Shadow asks if they were dreaming, and then the female hedgehog earlier says they were too late. She then introduces herself as Delilah. The two had the hedgehog, which Sonic demands her to tell everyone what was going on. She then says that the town was being devoured by darkness. Peach was confused, like all the other heroes of this story. Delilah then tells the churches are in their destinations, and they headed towards another church, before entering some building to look around. They find a trace on the floor where someone had moved the cabinet, and then Mario had an idea of pushing the cabinet. They try to help push the other side of the cabinet, when then they would find a secret passage. Shade then reappears, and Shade explains that things were going crazy, and that she couldn't get out at all because of the roads were all blocked. So she continues to say that the cars have completely stopped running, and all the phones and radios were still out too. Luigi would then ask Shade about the six children, and Shade would answer by saying that she did see a girl. Shadow asks if it was Shade or not, but Shade the Etchna would say that she only caught a glimpse of her. She continues to say that it wasn't her, but she went after her when she vanished. But she tried to explain more before being interrupted by Rouge. Rouge then accuses Shade of just letting her go places that she found in the, her in the fog. She then replied saying that she was headed towards the lake. After that, Sonic tells Shade about Delilah the Hedgehog and if she knew her. Mario then explains that she says something about the town being devoured by darkness. Mario and Sonic explain a few more things to Shade, like them coming face with Char Sally the Acorn. They even entered through that hole with Shade covering the backs. They would find an altar, and then they would assume that it was another church Delilah was talking about. Then they would find flames before cutting back to Shade, back to the entryway to the secret entrance. She would then see the flames and then start to worry for them, calling for them and ran into the room where they went earlier. But no one was there. The heroes would wake up back in the hospital they found Sally in. Sally then explains why they were having a bad dream. Sonic then asks her if she knows Delilah, who Delilah the Hedgehog was. To Sonic's surprise, she had never heard of her. She was saying she was very famous around here, but didn't really know her. She would then continue to explain that she lost her daughter in a fire and that had been crazy ever since. Daisy would explain to Sally that she has been saying the town's been devoured by darkness and asks if they have any idea what she meant by that. She then says that she thinks that before the demons had come, that Quiet Hill was once a happy town, then demons would come around and tearing the town to pieces. They continued to talk some more before cutting to our heroes in another room. It must have been another dream for them. Then they had fought. They would get the idea and head to the lake, and even the lake was blocked. They would then leave for the room, and then they enter one static security cam footage. They could see a footage of children being strapped on. To Turbo can be begging for help. They would run to the hallway before the floor collapses, causing them to fall. Once they got back and found the other for the demon wiggler things, then they would kill it. They would then find the hospital Sally was in again and meet up with Sally. Sonic would ask her if there was a way to get them to the lake. Sally would reply that it was right outside the old windmill. Mario then could tell that that road was being blocked, so Sally would tell them that it was the only way to get there. With them thinking all hope is lost, Sally would remember the old waterworks at the old elementary school. She continues by saying that there is an underground tunnel used for inspections. Then they would set out to the old elementary school, but Sally begs them not to leave her because she didn't want to be left alone. They would go find the waterworks, as Sally was talking about, and they would walk towards the door, but the door was locked and worn out. But Luigi found an axe and broke for the lock. Then they would later find a latch that they would have a ladder that would lead down to the sewer. They search up once more until they find more skeletal remains with an exit key. Then they left the sewers and go back to town to search some more before entering a place full of pool tables and Michael being attacked by a demon Koopa Troopa. Mario then would then shoot down the demon Koopa Troopa until it died, saving Michael from the horrifying creature. They checked to see if he was okay, and of course he was. Michael would ask if they found a way out, but Sonic had told him they haven't found a way out yet. Sonic then asks if he had any luck so far. Michael says he hasn't, but it wasn't the time to give up. Michael 
also goes on by saying the military rescue squad would be there soon, and he was about to head out, until Silver asks him about Mary. Michael would then say that he's never heard of her. After Michael left, they would search some more until they find some sort of weird bottle. Then Michael would show up again, but was angry this time. And he angrily demanded them to give him the weird bottle. Tails would ask what it is, but Michael said that it was none of his business. He would yell at them some more before leaving the room. They then went back outside, searched for some more before it cuts to the next cutscene. The ground started shaking again. After all that was happening, they would reunite with Shade and the Sonic, sorry to explain, the entire town was being invaded by Nightmarish World. Sonic would then continue to explain, before Delilah could enter through the door, saying that the demon is awakening. She then tells Mario and Sonic and the others to go to the lighthouse on the lake, in the center of the amusement park, and to make a hassle, as if they were their only hope. They would then search for some more, before finding the secret passage. They would go to the amusement park, though, and find Shade unconscious. She would then wake up and then walk towards the group in a creepy way. Then they would notice that Shade was being possessed, and they would fight her until she passed out again. After the fights, Tails said that Sonic, Mario, L Amy, Peach, Luigi, Daisy, Shadow, and Rouge would should go to the lighthouse and keep, and while the others keep on eye on Shade. They would then walk off before they would find Mary again. Mario and Sonic would demand them to give the children back before Mary put her hand up and used some sort of unseen force to knock out Mario, Sonic, Amy, Peach, Luigi, Daisy, Shadow, and Rouge. Then Delilah appeared again and started to walk towards Mary, before rambling and arguing amongst two. Delilah says that her and Mary are going home, and it was confirmed that Mary is Delilah's daughter. Then they would walk back up to the hospital with Sally. The Sally tells that something's bothering her. She says when she went to the basement, even though she was scared, and while she was down there, she says that she had this weird feeling of that she had been down there before. They could talk some more until Sally would run out of the room, crying, before they heard a sound coming from the basement. They would leave the room, take the elevator, and enter another room. They also bump into Sally again, and asks if Sonic, if he could have a moment alone, just him and her. Sonic tells everyone to wait outside, and then Sonic would ask what was the matter with her. She would then talk a little bit more, before Sally would walk towards Sonic, crying, and having her arms out like she was about to hug him. But Sonic pushed her back towards a the wall, then blood started to flow from her body. Then she started towards Sonic again, before he shut the door on her. They could walk back to the room, and she had disappeared. They would have to leave to go in another room, before it cut to the cutscene. It was of Mary the Hedgehog crying before disappearing, and they would search for some more before entering another room. Then they would hear that Mary and Delilah were having an argument. Then Delilah was face to face with Sonic, Mario, Amy, Peach, Luigi, Daisy, Shadow, and Rouge. She would tell them about the terrible things that she has done, before getting shot by Michael. He used that bottle from earlier, and then Mary turns into a demon, then kills Delilah, and then kill that demon, and they would find the kids. They would be happy that they found the kids, while well, meanwhile, Michael would get up back up before Sally rose back from the dead. She was still covered in blood and drug Michael away. If she was going to kill him, then Sonic, Mario, Peach, Amy, Luigi, Daisy, Shadow, Rouge, would run out of the burning building with the kids. They would reunite with their other friends as they watched Shade the Etchna before finding a bus driver who was willing to drive them home. Then it, during the ride home, the credits rolled. I will admit that that's kind of weird having a game with Mario and Sonic characters that parodies Silent Hill, but it turned out to be a really decent game. My uncle Jim told me. That's cool and all, but where did you get the game? I asked. I got it at a thrift store, store called Jones and junk and more thrift shop jim replied but that place was closed down because a visitor named carl was shot and killed there my uncle jim continued okay i managed to contact the two developers of mario and sonic adventure through the the dead house in hopes that to get as to get an answer as to why they created the game i said it turns out that the developers were former employees for nintendo from the sega i continued they wanted to make a game that uses their pitches to make something darker out of Mario brand or Sonic brand. They hated both Nintendo and Sega, so they made the game anyway until they got fired from Nintendo and Sega, I explained. Then that person who was fired from Nintendo still wanted the game to be played, 
somebody by someone so he went to an airport in japan and told someone who works there to take it to a retail store in the u.s in hopes that someone would play it i continue to explain but one thing i'm wondering is that i contacted the person who worked at nintendo and he told me to return the ha to the dead house but he had no clue of existing i continue once more then i got my switch out and showed my game to the my uncle maybe if you click on the return to the dead house Maybe you could see if there's a game if who made it being listed, Jim told me. Good idea, I said. I looked to see if I found something saying Return to the Dead House, created by Carl Wilson. Carl was the creator of my game? My Uncle Jim asked in surprise. Well, I guess so, I replied in shock. Now I'm considering who made Mario and Sonic on Quiet Hill, I asked. I don't know. I bought it too, so let's see, Uncle Jim said as he puts Mario and Sonic on Quiet Hill onto my Switch, and the animation of Mario and Sonic giving us a warning play. Warning, the game you're about to play might be disturbing to children and other players, Mario said. We recommend tucking your kids early to bed tonight instead of writing an angry letter to us. Tomorrow, now enjoy the game, Sonic said. Then, it begins with the opening cutscene. You ready for your birthday trip, Turbo? Sonic said to the kid. Yes, Dad. Turbo replied to Sonic.